So the song is finished, at least from the songwriting point of view. Now I need to record everything. But before I start recording, I need to change the strings on this guitar, because some of them, the ones that didn't break, are the original ones that arrived with the guitar, so it's been definitely overdue. Okay, so the guitar should be ready, should be in tune, intonation should be correct and everything. It was a bit more complicated than usual because this guitar has a Evertune bridge. So yeah, it's, it's a bit more complicated and I'm not really used to changing strings and, and tune everything on the Evertune, but it is a really a beast and a workhorse like it's great for recording because it will stay in tune always i don't need to care about that at all so that's that's really a huge help so i should be ready and i should be able to get started with recording i was doing some research watching some videos on youtube how to dial high gain metal tone. I like the videos by Rabia Masad. He did like a series on how to dial certain types of tones. And he mentioned a Tube Screamer a lot. I didn't own a Tube Screamer pedal up until today. I ran into the store and I bought one. And apparently there is this uh, very specific setting that almost everyone uses when using the Tube Screamer in front of the amp for the met metal tone. And the, the setting is that the overdrive, it's seven o'clock, so yeah, the, the lowest possible settings. And then you have a level around two o'clock and the tone is around one o'clock. So these are the settings and you can just set it and forget it, apparently. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm curious uh, how it will sound when I hook it up to my amp and, and yeah, uh, excited. Okay, so let's dial in the rhythm guitar tone. I have my Rev G20 that's going into the aux box where I have selected the V30 Studio Factory preset that's going into the door. In the effects loop, of the Rev G20, I have the Kraken preamp. And that means that I can essentially bypass the preamp of the Rev G20 and use the Kraken. And depending on which I like the most, I will decide. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, I, I have the choice of using either the Rev G20 preamp or the Kraken preamp. The Kraken will use the power amp section of, of the Rev G20. So, that's, that's the amp section, I guess. In front of that, I have the 
Tube Screamer. Right now it's disabled. And going into the Tube Screamer, I have a looper where I recorded some basic like chugging and some, some basic riff, N nothing fancy. But the idea is to have some, some riffing uh, in the loop and I can just focus on dialing the tone and I don't have to like switch my hands from guitar to the amp and back and forth. So yeah, this should help me with the process. So I played with both of these for a while and I think I'm gonna go with the Kraken. There's just something more, something more that I like. Uh, but I'm still not fully uh, decided. I still haven't really dialed in the, the right tone. Okay, so in the end I've settled on something like this. It is quite noisy with the Tube Screamer. But yeah, in any case, I guess I could use a DI box and to, to have a clean DI so that I can reamp it in the future. But even though I don't consider this like a super nice tone, I just want to commit myself to, uh, to one tone and not to have the option to reamp it in the future because then I will never finish it. And yeah, that's how they did it in the old days. Three amping, I guess, is it's nice for adding effects or adding like reverbs and delays and so on. But with with the gain, I just want to have one tone and be done with it. Essentially, small update: I've bypassed the IRs from the Oxbox and I loaded a blend of two impulse responses from the John Petrucci IR pack that I purchased a long time ago. Both with the Rev G20 and the Kraken, there's only so much that you can do when it comes to EQ of the amp and changing the impulse response had a quite effect as well. Yesterday I was trying to record ambient guitars, so there is a lot of reverb and delay and it's very clean. It goes something like this. But there is a lot of string sliding and I don't like it when it's, when it's there, when it's in the recording. And because I didn't record it a DI, I went directly with the delay and the reverb and the, the, the bit of distortion. The signal, it's, it's not really possible to work with it. I'm not able to, to remove those uh, string sliding noises. And they are even more pronounced because of that delay. It just goes on and on. So today will be another attempt 
to solve this, but this time I will actually record DI with help of this DI box. And then I will edit the DI, I will remove the string sliding or any noise that I don't like and I can just remove it from the DI and then I will send the clean DI signal through the reamp box again through the same signal chain. So it goes into the compressor, then delay, reverb, or actually it goes into the compressor, into the Kraken preamp, then it goes into the delay, then reverb, then finally into the effects loop of the Rev G20, then the aux box, and then it goes to the logic where I'm using impulse response or actually blend of impulse responses and that will give me the final tone. So let's record it and hopefully it will be better than yesterday. I have recorded a few runs of the chord progression. I have a few DIs that I can choose from. First, I will edit them, clean them up, remove the string uh, sliding string noises, and then I can reamp it. The sound before the sliding noise is basically dead. There's nothing, so that's good. That will make for a smooth transition. And I'm not losing anything by cutting that segment with the string noise out. I think it was a success. So far it looks like uh, there are no string noises. I'm getting pretty solid sound. This is the first time I'm reamping. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's pretty cool actually. And obviously the advantage is that at any time in the future I can change the tone or even adjust the delay or reverb effects which wouldn't be possible because once these effects are set in and recorded you cannot change them so it's pretty cool uh, I, I guess I will be doing it often I actually have uh, two of these reamp boxes so technically I could run it in stereo but because I'm using a compressor which doesn't have stereo inputs then, yeah, I, I can go with, with stereo through my uh, Strymon timeline and Big Sky effects, unfortunately. But I, I think that for this part it's not really needed. Actually, I recorded both sides for the guitar, so maybe it will be stereo. I don't know. I will find out. Okay, it's, it's not bad, but I definitely can do some more editing improve it even more. I was using a guitar with single coil pickups and it's, it's picking up more noise. So whenever I strum the chord and I let it sound for extended time uh, and as the signal lowers, th there is increased amount of noise. So hopefully I can do something about that. But other than that, pretty good. I definitely got the read of the a string sliding noise and yeah happy about that so i just finished reamping both left and right channels for the ambient guitars or ambient rhythm guitars and as you can see i used automation to lower the volume of the di tracks uh, when the noise starts to pick pick up and this kind of solved the problem so I did a few runs of the reamping and whenever I saw some issue, I tried to fix it. Overall, it, it sounds pretty good if I can say so myself. It's definitely handy to, to, to have a DI track and to reamp it and uh, fix the problems. I will be using it a lot more in the future for sure. So now all is left is the solo for the ambient section 
and then also short part for the intro with the ambient guitars and after that everything should be finished, done, recorded and we can move on to the next phase. That's it! Everything was recorded and here's the promised sneak peek. Thank you for watching, please hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow me on my journey and I'll see you in the next one.